Okay, so this is a demonstration called dielectric breakdown, and uh, capacitors normally look like this, kind of commercial capacitors or capacitors used in circuits, the kind of uh, barrel-shaped cartridges um, with a whole load of stuff kind of wrapped up inside to keep them uh, small. But what we've done here, we've made a kind of homemade capacitor, um, totally impractical to use in any uh, useful context, of course, uh, except to demonstrate dielectric breakdown which is what we're going to do today. Uh, it consists of two sheets of aluminium foil. Okay, there's one and there's another one under there. And separated by a piece of uh, cling film. So it really is a kind of kitchen uh, capacitor, this one. And the cling film, of course, is acting as dielectric, keeping the two conducting parallel aluminium foil plates apart. And you'll notice that we've got a couple of crocodile clips and leads. One's attached to the bottom aluminium sheet through to this EHT high voltage power supply. And this lead here is connected to the top. And basically what we're going to do is that we're going to put uh, a large voltage across this. So we're going to step the voltage up. I'm going to see how the thing behaves. Um, by the way, the capacitance of this particular uh, capacitor, we could work out using the equation which is on the board here. It's not on the syllabus, by the way, this equation for you guys, but, uh, but it's quite interesting to see it anyway. C is the capacitance of the capacitor. Uh, epsilon naught is something called the permittivity of free space, which is about 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 12, quite a small number. E, uh, epsilon R is the uh, relative permittivity of the dielectric, which in this case is the um, cling film, and that has a value of about 2.25. Uh, the A is the area of the plates. This is about 1 metre by about 0.5 metres. And D is the plate separation, which in this case is the thickness, well, approximately anyway, the thickness of the cling film, which we reckon is about 10 microns, so about 1 times 10 to the minus 5 metres. So you can try and work out what the capacitance of this capacitor is. Uh, it's round about 1 microfarad, as it turns out, which is about exactly the same as this one. It's quite surprising. Uh, so, um, let's put a voltage across and see what happens. Right, okay, so here's our capacitor. We've got our power supply ready to go. Uh, I've just put the other little one there. Remember, this, the capacitance of this is around about the same as that, which uh, is quite interesting. I'll get rid of that now. Um, okay, so we're going to turn on the power supply, and what's going to happen? Well, electrons are going to move from one plate via the power supply onto the other leaving the plate they've left with a net positive charge and the plate onto which they arrive with a net negative charge. So the first thing that's going to happen is the two plates are going to be attracted to each other um, and we should actually detect some type of motion perhaps between the plates. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to turn on the power supply and crank up the voltage. So we're going to do this again now in close-up. So listen and watch very carefully and see if you can see anything. I'm turning the voltage up from zero now, slowly. It's a 1K. 2 kilovolts. And that sparking that you can hear maybe see some flashes, is where the dielectric is breaking down. The electric field between the two plates is sufficient for current, for charge, to leap across through the dielectric, which is really not what you want to happen in any practical capacitor. Okay, so we've dimmed the lights, we're switching on, we've removed the internal resistance of the power supply and I'm going to turn up the voltage to 5k in 3, 2, 1, now.
So we've seen the dielectric actually conducting charge here, which is not normally what we would want a capacitor to do. Uh, the dielectric is an insulator and is meant to um, not allow charge to pass across in normal circumstances. What we've done in this particular experiment is that we've deliberately exceeded the uh, maximum electric field that this capacitor can withstand before sparking takes place across from one plate to the other via the dielectric, which as I say is normally absolutely not what you would want to happen to any capacitor which is in uh, any piece of expensive electronic uh, kit that you may have.